pretty easy rules to observe the chi that is zoom. Don't disturb it, so you don't want to influence the system. You want to be an observer. Well, you want to record the motion. Again, think of clover if you feel, so hold the camera still. Or if you do need to move, you could get like a rolling cart that goes to a steady pace. So those are the things we gotta make sure that we keep in order to study the cheetah. But you know, today we have so much technology so we can do more exciting things with the cheetah, the, the, the video of the cheetah. So what we can do, we can take our video back home and we can do some video editing. So I want you to imagine your favorite video editing app. Video editing. And what we're gonna do with it, we want to make sure that we load up our video into the app, but if you're familiar with how the videos work, it's scrolling to multiple still images. So here, let's just take my very bad drawing of multiple images. So again, if these are still images, in each image, you're going to see the cheetah only once. Okay, so this cheetah happens to be moving along. So right now, we, we don't know what's going on. We need to refer to the second frame or the second still picture. Maybe the cheetah moves a little bit more to the right. And then if the cheetah moves a little bit more to the right again, So each of these are pictures, so we want to indicate now these pictures as frames. So we call these frames. Like you might have heard frames per second, right? So now you kind of imagine this, and we're going to assume that between each frame, there's one second of time going by. Again, this is a very bad assumption for this case, but it's going to make calculations a lot easier. So assume one second between each frame. So now we want to analyze this as physicists. Once we already upload our video, we see the frames. Each one is one second apart. What you're going to do, you're going to imagine taking a scissor. So imagine taking a scissor. And we're going to cut up each frame. What we're going to do with those frames, well, we're going to imagine stacking them all up on top of one another. So again, after we cut each frame, we're going to imagine stacking them up on top of one another. So what would that look like? So let's draw a new picture here. And instead of seeing the cheetah only once, we're going to see three cheetahs. Right? Because we stacked them up and then we had three cheetahs. Oh, now we're going to be approaching into a great type of diagrams that's going to help us to study motion. So I'm going to introduce them shortly. But as you can tell, my drawings are not the best. So we need to make another approximation to make the drawings a lot simpler to represent motion. So once we stacked up all the frames together, so stacked up frames, in other words, piled on top of one another. What we're going to do, we're going to just replace the cheetah by a dot. Now, this dot, you want to draw it normally where the center of mass is, or in other words, where most of the weight is located, or the mass of the object. So, for example, me, it will be right at the core, for the cheetah, maybe somewhere in the middle of its body. So let's try to redraw this image here. Wow, we're almost there. Okay, good. But then you wonder, huh, we're trying to study motion, but now we have three dots, and we don't even know what it represents. So we need to backtrack ourselves a little bit into this image. Hmm. We can assume that the cheetah is walking forward, but what's to stop the cheetah from walking backwards, right? So we need to indicate which is the first frame, the second frame, the third frame, and so forth. So we need to go back to our video editing, 
and we're going to label each frame with an index number or a frame number. So we're going to call it the zeroth frame, first frame, second frame. So again, this represents the frame number. Why this is helpful is because now we can place it here with our cheetah image. So this is the zeroth frame, first frame, second frame. Oh, that tells me that the cheetah is moving towards the right. Look how much information is going to give us in this particular image. Oh, so now I have zeroth frame, first frame, second frame. So the cheetah is moving to the right. So if you already noticed, I'm describing motion. That was our goal. We want to study motion. One way we can describe motion is through the use of these diagrams. So this is called a motion diagram. And what it's used to represent is trying to represent the type of motion and the direction of motion. So the information that it gives us is the type of motion and direction of motion. So, so far in this lesson, as far as we can tell, we were only able to conclude the direction of motion, but in the next video that we're going to do, we're going to talk about how to determine the type of motion that our cheetah is under.